YouTube, Mo's Nose fam, what it do? Welcome back in the building. It's my draft season. We are here. The 2022 NFL season is over. We are in the off season of the 2023 NFL season, and it starts right here at Mo's Nose with the mock drafts. We're hitting you today with our first official first round mock draft. We're going from one to 31. Now it's only 31. Because unfortunately, some teams did some things that was unsavory, and a team got a pick forfeit. That was the Miami Dolphins. One of their picks is forfeited. It is what it is. So we're going through all 31 first round picks, but we're going to pick, uh, we're going to draft a player for every team in the first round. And this is going to be our first edition of this, you know, after the 2023 scouting combine, which is coming up in a couple of days. Um, that's starting uh, February 28th. After the scouting combine, we'll, there will be some draft risers, some draft fall, fallers. You guys know how it goes. You've been here for, for two seasons of this with me now. Um, but we'll do multiple versions of these first round picks. Um, and then we do our team specific mock draft series where we go through all 32 NFL teams and we go through from round one through round seven and we completely build their draft class for the 2023 season. So you do not want to miss any of that content right here at Mo's Nose. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. Join the Mo's Nose fam. Listen, once your family, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now let's jump right into this mock draft. We're going to be using the PFF simulator. So uh, we only want the first round. We're going to check this box because we want all 32 teams. If you have a first round pick, let's enter the draft. Now, this first iteration, this first edition, what, my draft 1.0, if you want to call it. I'm not going to do any trades. Uh, we know there will be some first round trades uh, in some of our later mocks once we have a little bit more information as we continue to dive deep into each of these team needs, as we continue to dive deep into the prospects of this 2023 class. You know, we'll, we'll iron out some trades and we'll, we'll throw some funky stuff in there. But uh, let's just go based off of team need and where you're picking right now. Uh, so we got the Bears on the clock, number one. Unfortunately, there are about three or four, maybe five quarterbacks in this draft class that teams might want to go after. Um, do I think the Chicago Bears are one of those teams? Absolutely not. There are some rumblings around town that uh, they may want to move on from Justin Fields. I think that would be a mistake. Um, so right here at the number one pick with the Chicago Bears, I think they go defense. Uh, they traded away Khalil Mack a few years ago. They need to replenish uh, that edge rush. They need to get after the passer, um, particularly in that division. I'm going to go with Will Anderson Jr. Uh, with the first overall pick. Uh, once that card comes in, I think the Houston Texans don't waste any time. I think they went right to uh, the panel and turn in their card for the quarterback of their choosing uh, under new head coach D'Amico Ryans. I think they go C.J. Stroud being the number one cornerback off the board. I think uh, he has the measurables. Uh, he has the, the, the game film. And I think compared to the other quarterbacks in the class, I think he's just a notch above um, everyone else who is here. Then we have the Arizona Cardinals on the clock here at pick number three. Now I thought long and hard about this one. I could give them uh, the best player in the draft class, I think, uh, but I don't think they go there. Um, and I don't think they go there because this is pick three. Now, this is a potential trade down spot. Arizona does not need a quarterback. They're rolling with Kyler Murray. Um, so if they don't need a quarterback, um, could they take someone here um, at this number three pick? Yes. I think they trade back and, and acquire more picks just to continue to help uh, new head coach Jonathan Gannon, you know, build the team the way he sees fit. Um, but if they stay here, um, I think they need to add pass rusher, particularly again in this division. Geno Smith in Seattle had uh, a phenomenal season. We know Matthew Stafford is coming back for uh, the Rams and whoever Kyle Shanahan decides to throw at quarterback, we know that they'll be doing some special things with the 49ers in that high powered offense. So I think you need to affect the pass. You need to get at the pass, get, get after the quarterback. Um, and while Jalen Carter is probably the best defensive player in this draft class. Uh, you don't see de defensive tackles going as high, at this high, this often. 
you, you see quarterbacks and you see pass rushers. You see the guys who can throw the ball and you see the guys who can get after those throwing the ball. Um, I'm gonna go Tyree Wilson at number three to the Cardinals uh, to get after the quarterback. At number four, Colts. New head coach, uh, what's my man's name from Philly? Uh, Shane Steichman, I think. Uh, new head coach coming in, bringing in his offensive system from Philadelphia. Um, they need a quarterback. That's what we need a quarterback. They have pieces on offense. They have pieces on defense. They need a quarterback. They have the fourth overall pick to get it done. Um, I love Bryce Young. Something in my gut is telling me that Will Levis is going to be the second quarterback off the board. I don't agree with this. I think this will be a mistake. Uh, but I think this is where the Colts go. Um, I think they go Will Levis at four. Which leaves Seattle on the clock at five. And a pick they acquired from Denver. I don't think they expected Denver to be this bad. I don't think they're complaining that Denver was that bad. But now they're on the clock with the fifth overall pick. I do think they want to bring Geno Smith back. He did some great things last year, and I think he can continue that. Um, but I, I do also know that Geno Smith is a little up there in age. Been in the league a very long time. And I think he could be a great mentor for a young quarterback. I think if this guy falls to their lap, they run to the podium. They turn this card in. Seahawks at number five. They take Bryce Young, and they have their quarterback of the future. Um, I think that worked out perfectly for them. Now on the clock is the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions, a young, feisty team uh, that early in the season was trying to figure out, find their way. They found their stride mid-season, late season. They were contenders. They were trying to fight for one of those uh, wild card spots. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get in. Uh, they handled their business, but they needed another team to win. Um, I think that was the Rams, and the Rams lost to the Seahawks, which, also, which ultimately put the Seahawks in that seventh seed. Um, but I think here is a great slot for a defensive tackle. You already add Aiden Hutchinson from last year. You saw what he was able to do in his rookie campaign. He's going to be a problem for a long time. Now you get the best defensive player in this class. I think Aiden Hutchinson was the best defensive player in his class last year. I'm going to do a 2022 my draft redo. Spoiler alert, Aiden Hutchinson is going to be the first overall pick, so he doesn't go to Detroit. But you add Jalen Carter to that defensive line, causing havoc on the interior, and you have Aiden Hutchinson on the outside, this Detroit team is going to be scary. I'm going Jalen Carter, number six, to the Detroit Lions. Now, that brings the Las Vegas Raiders up on the clock. They need a quarterback. You see that as their means. Do they take Anthony Richardson here? I don't think so. I don't think, you know, their head coach in this regime, I don't think they want to go after uh, an Anthony Richardson style quarterback. Um, I, I think it, it, it wouldn't be a bad choice here, um, but I don't know if, if Anthony Richardson fits what they want to do in Las Vegas. Um, so what's next? Offensive line, defensive back, kind of went back and forth. Um, you could go Paris Johnson here. Um, but I think if, if Devin Witherspoon is on the board, I think you go take him. Uh, one of the best cornerbacks in this class um, in a division that has Russell Wilson, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, the wide receivers that are in that division. Um, I think, yes, Las Vegas gonna be, is gonna need to be able to score points, but I think they're also gonna, be, need, gonna need to be able to play defense and shut down some of those offenses. Uh, so I'm going Devin Witherspoon at seven. Falcons are on the clock at eight. I think they need pass rush. Um, they have some good pieces on the back end, uh, but I think you need to, to restock and replenish the pass rush there in Atlanta. So I am going to go Miles Murphy out of Clemson here at eight. I think he's a great fit uh, for what they want to do in Atlanta. Then at nine, Carolina Panthers. Now the, the same could be in question for Frank Wright. Is Anthony Richardson uh, 
the type of quarterback or the style of quarterback that Frank Reich would want in his system. I think more so than the Raiders, I think Carolina may be a better fit for Anthony Richardson. Um, and I think Frank Reich, um, with his experience, um, both with traditional pocket quarterbacks and quarterbacks who can extend the pocket um, and have mobility to get outside of the pocket and run, make some things happen. Um, he was able to do some positive things with Carson Wentz in Philly. That didn't materialize in Indianapolis. I think that was more of a Carson Wentz problem and not a Frank Wright problem. Um, but I would like to see Anthony Richardson with a offensive mind like Frank Wright um, and see what he's able to do with Carolina. Uh, so I'm gonna go Anthony Richardson at nine to the Carolina Panthers. Philadelphia Eagles on the clock right now have wide receiver, guard, and center as some needs. Center, maybe. We'll have to see what happens with uh, Jason Kelsey. Um, I think if he does retire, I think Landon Dickerson moves in, moves even more inside to center, um, and they may need to, to refill that guard spot. Wide receiver, I mean, they got Batman and skinny Batman. I don't think that's a problem for this team. Uh, they are losing James Bradbury on the outside. Um, they do have a, a few free agents that um, they will be losing uh, just due to where their cap sits right now. And they have to pay Jalen Hurts. Um, I think they replenish that cornerback position. Um, and I think they go in state to Penn State and they get Joey Porter Jr. Um, and put him next to Darius Slade uh, if Bradbury walks in free agency. Up next on the clock is the Tennessee Titans. Um, I think at some point this team is going to have to look at the quarterback position. Do they want to address it this year? Do they feel that confident in a C.J. Stroud, a Will Levis, or a, a Bryce Young to move up into the top five to snag one of those guys? Do they like an Anthony Richardson more than they like a Malik Willis that they drafted last year? I feel like at some point this team is going to have to look at quarterback. I don't think they do that this year. I think they need more weapons on the offensive end. Uh, you drafted Traylon Burks wide receiver last year. Still have Derrick Henry in the fold. But I think you need more weapons on the outside to help whoever it is that lines up at quarterback. Um, so with the 11th overall pick, I'm sending Jordan Addison to the Tennessee Titans. And then we have the Houston Texans back on the clock. We took care of a need at quarterback. But now we still have any other needs at center or defensive line. Um, but this team also needs weapons. Brandon Cooks may be on the move. He may not be coming back to Houston. Um, but then outside of him, yeah, we have John Metchie, but he's coming off the injury. We don't know what he's going to give us. Um, it's, it's still his speed. He may be one-dimensional coming off of the, uh, the injury. He may just be a deep threat. Um, we need somebody who can do a little bit more than that um, and give our young quarterback some more options. I think we get him a big option in Quentin Johnson from TCU. So the Houston Texans leave the first round with CJ Stroud and Quentin Johnson. I think that is a major, major come up. The Jets are on the clock. They also have a need at quarterback. What are they going to do with Zach Wilson? Are they gonna bring in a Jimmy Garoppolo? Are they gonna bring in a Derek Carr? Are they gonna bring in a veteran quarterback? I think so. I don't think they use 13 to trade up. I don't think they use additional assets to trade up um, and, and, and spin those wheels again with another rookie young quarterback. I think they go get a veteran, um, but then what do you do? I think at this point, you protect whoever that is. Uh, yes, you have Dwayne Brown in the fold. He's 35, 36 years old. Uh, he's a little long in the tooth. Uh, Makai Becton, great player, can't seem to stay healthy and give you a full season. So I think you have to address the tackle spot again, and I think you can do it with one of the best tackles in this class, Paris Johnson Jr. at 13. Pick 14, the Patriots are on the clock. I also think they go tackle. 
Uh, they have a couple of tackles that are hitting free agency. Um, they may want to divulge some dollars elsewhere. Maybe there is a free agent wide receiver that they want to bring into the fold. Um, there are a couple other things that they can do, um, but I think they can go young on the offensive line, train them up, build them up, have them for years to come. Uh, Peter Skaronsky from Northwestern fits what New England wants to do on the offensive side of the ball. I think they get another outstanding tackle who is um, one of the top tackles in the NFL uh, for some years to come. The Green Bay Packers on the clock. What is happening with Aaron Rodgers? We still don't know yet. I think he's currently in his darkness retreat, so we'll re respect him and his wishes. Um, but we got to talk about it. what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. And it would be ironic for Aaron Rodgers to leave the Green Bay Packers and they finally, like really, really address the wide receiver position. Yes, they got Christian Watson. Yes. But there were some other times they had some other wide receivers on the board that they could have attacked and they chose not to. I think this year they finally do it. They get Christian Watson to run and make Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State to the Green Bay Packers at 15. Uh, then we have the Washington Commanders on the clock at 16. What do we do here? Quarterback, also a need, but I think at 16, um, it would take a lot of draft capital for them to move up and get one of the young guys. Do they take a flyer on a Tennessee guy like Hendon Hooker coming off the injury? I don't know if you use the 16th pick uh, on that quarterback in this spot. So there are other needs, guard, center, uh, linebacker. Um, but taking a look at this team and taking a look at who they have on the offensive line, they can use an upgrade at tackle. They can use an upgrade, they can use competition. I like tackle here for Washington, for whoever the quarterback is gonna be. So I'm gonna slot them, Broderick Jones, tap out of Georgia. I think he comes in right away. Um, I think he can, uh, I think he can dethrone Charles Leno. Um, who do they have on the other side? Um, I just had it in my mental role week. Now I'm skating. Cornelius Lucas. I mean, they drafted Sam Cosme. He hasn't been able to crack the starting lineup. I, I think there's a, a good possibility that Roger Jones can bring in competition and have a chance to start, even if it's at right tackle, have a chance to start for this team um, and, and bring positive dividends uh, on the offensive side. Uh, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers on the clock at 17. Tackle, linebacker, cornerback, are our options here as far as what the team needs are. And I think Pittsburgh stays true to their roots. And I think they go defense. I think they go cornerback here. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick on the back end has been a, a great find for them, trading for him from the Miami Dolphins. But I think they upgrade the cornerback position, you know, seeing who's in their division having to go against a Jamar Chase and a T. Higgins. Um, we know that the Baltimore Ravens, or at least I feel, that they're gonna attack the wide receiver position. They need to update and upgrade that position group. Uh, we look at the Browns with Amari Cooper, Donovan People jones You know, this AFC North division has some good receivers that need to be locked down. I think Pittsburgh Steelers run to the podium. They grab Christian Gonzalez. I think he's a great fit for what they do in Pittsburgh. He's gonna fit in like a glove there. Now we move to the Detroit Lions at 18. Um, a young team, some holes, some pieces that need to be filled in, in some places. Um, but I think having this additional first round pick, they could trade back and get more assets. But I think they can continue to build and find core pieces and players that fit what they want to do. They traded away TJ Hawkinson. 
what way to replace him than to add a young tight end on a rookie deal who's looking to make a name for himself in the NFL. I think they go to Notre Dame and they snag Michael Meyer, throw him into that offense. We know that he's a solid tight end. We know his football IQ is off the charts. We know he's going to be a mismatch against smaller linebackers, safeties, and corners. We know he's going to be a mismatch in a red zone. Give Jared Goff a safety blanket, a security blanket for him to go to in, in stressful situations. I think that's a great pick adding to that Detroit Lions offense. Then we get to 19. Here's where I had a, a little bit of a, you know, di different thought process. I didn't know where I wanted to go with this pick. At first, I was thinking they go Bijan Robinson. Yes, I know they have Leonard Fournette. Yes, I know they have Rashad White. So they have two running backs in the fold, but we don't know who the quarterback is going to be, right? So what helps a young quarterback or a veteran quarterback come into a new system? That's a running game, right? Maybe you move on from playoff Lenny. You know, you start the season with Rashad White. Let B. John Robinson, you know, feel his way, get his feet wet in the NFL. And then if he takes over and becomes that true number one running back, then you have B. John as your number one. Rashad White, you know, spelling him. I think that's a good situation. Um... But I, I think this team, I think they like playoff Lenny too much. Um, so they may not be willing to move off of him just yet. I think they like the one-two punch of Fournette and White. So where else can we go? Maybe we can go offensive line. Uh, we don't know the status of Ryan Jensen. Is he going to retire? Is he going to come back and play another year? We know he had the injury last year that kept him out a majority of the season. So that's an option. Um, I think with this team, they got to find edge rush. Uh, Shaquille Barrett, Shaq Barrett, he's 30 years old, getting a little bit long in the tooth. Um, uh, Joe Tryon Shoyinka, he's, he's he's more of a, a spotty pass rusher to me. Like he's He flashes here or there, but he hasn't turned into the consistently dominant edge rusher that they thought he would be. Um, so I think they got to re replenish that well. Um, they got to go back and, and find somebody that they can add to the mix. I'm going Lucas Vanez from Iowa. Solid, solid pass rusher. Um, I think he can go into Tampa Bay and do some really, really good things. The Seattle Seahawks are back on the clock at pick 20. Uh, their original pick. Um, and now I think they can go defense. Um, maybe you can go offensive line here. But I don't think they do. Again, you know, I talked about the Cardinals replenishing the pass rush. I'm going to say the same thing for Seattle. They got to worry about Kyler, Kyler Murray. They have to worry about whoever the 49ers are going to deploy at quarterback. They have to worry about maybe Matthew Stafford coming back and being healthy again. So I think they continue, again, to add uh, pressure. They continue to add edge rushers. I love Nolan Smith to the Seahawks. As a 49er fan, y'all see it. I hate this as a division rival, but if I'm being objective and taking my own team biases out, especially since my team lines for first round pick anyway, Nolan Smith to me is a perfect fit for what Seattle wants to do. It, hunger, tenacity, motor, get him on that team, Coached by Pete Carroll, that that could be a problem. Nolan Smith to me seems like a perfect fit right here for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I got I, I have to I have to be objective. That's a really really good pick. Um, okay, next pick is forfeited again. Miami Dolphins. That's out of here. So now twenty one moves down to the Chargers. If you heard screaming. That was probably my daughter. And they're making too much noise. I would yell, but then I'm going to yell in y'all ear. I'm not going to do that. So we'll let them have their fun. Daddy will yell once the video is over. Okay, we got the Chargers on the clock at 21. Um, I think they go offensive line. They find somebody to go opposite Rashawn Slater. 
um, to have bookend tackles to keep Justin Herbert upright. And with that, I'm going to Anton Harrison out of Oklahoma. Just mentioned earlier, Baltimore Ravens need a wide receiver. We still got to figure out what's happening with Lamar Jackson. Maybe they trade Lamar. Maybe they get a, a boatload of draft picks. Maybe they get a wide receiver earlier. If they get a wide receiver earlier, great. If they don't get a wide receiver till 22, that's still fine because that wide receiver is Zay Flowers from Boston College. This kid is electric. This would be a great pick for Baltimore at 22. At 23, the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock. A lot of different ways they can go. I thought about giving them Brian Branch. I really thought about giving them Brian Branch. Harrison Smith is getting a little up there in age, but they do have Cameron Bynum. They do have Lewis seen that they drafted last year. So I think I thought giving them a safety might be a bit redundant. But I, I think they need additional pieces on that defensive line. It can't just be Daniil Hunter. They have to find somebody else who can help get after the quarterback. I'm going Brian Breesey from Clemson at 23 to the Vikings. Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. Um, they, again, same like Detroit, started off slow, found their way mid-season. Towards the end of the season, they picked it up. They found a way to win their division and get into the playoffs. Um, absolutely amazing season from the Jacksonville Jaguars team. So you continue to build on that, right? Um, defensively, they have a very, very young and talented defense. I don't think they need pieces there. Um, I do think they need to continue to focus on the offensive line to make sure that they keep Trevor Lawrence upright. You see the biggest needs are guard and center. I'm going to go Osiris Torrance out of Florida. Probably the best guard in the draft, at least top three. Now, here's where we get tricky. New York Giants are on the clock. Wide receiver, tight end, center, linebacker are their needs. However, they're in a great position. Had a good season, made it into the playoffs, beat the Vikings, the wild card round, made it to the divisional round, lost to the Eagles. So they end with the 25th pick. We know in the NFL, running backs don't get drafted high anymore. Yeah, they drafted Saquon high. But running backs don't get drafted high anymore. Saquon's a free agent. He's looking for a big payday. The Giants could have an opportunity to say, hey, we know Saquon does, does, has done some good things, but he's also had some unfortunate injuries in his career. Do we want to give him this big payday? Or do we want to use those funds at other positions? Maybe go get a veteran wide receiver, maybe go get a veteran tight end, a veteran center who can help us, you know, direct some things on this offensive line. And do we get younger and cheaper on a rookie contract with the running back? I mean, replacing Saquon Barkley with B. John Robinson doesn't sound, doesn't sound like a, a bad plan to me. So we'll have to see how things shake out with free agency what the Giants are talking about, what Saquon wants money-wise, and if they can make something happen. But if I start to hear rumblings that the two sides are far apart on the deal, blah, 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 blah. listen, it could be a, a situation where you see the Giants go get B. John Robinson in the draft and let Saquon Barkley get that big payday from another team. It's definitely possible. Okay, Dallas Cowboys on the clock. Wide receiver, defensive line, linebacker is in need, okay? Um, we got Kalaja Kansi here from Pittsburgh. I don't think that's where they go. Um, I think Andre Carter could be a good pick here. Again, I don't think this is where they go either. Um, this this team, like the Raiders, they like the, they like the splash picks, right? I think this team goes offense. I think they go tight end. 
They're probably losing Dalton Schultz. I wanted to replace Dalton with a dog. But then I thought about who I was drafting for. And that's the Dallas Cowboys. I can totally see the Dallas Cowboys going to get Darnell Washington from Georgia. He's 6'8", 6'7", 270. So you, you know what he can give you in the run game at that size. And you know what he can give you in the pass game. He is one of the ath most athletic tight ends in this draft class, which what he's just able to do at that size, it, it's unfathomable, you know? So I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys made Darnell Washington a first round pick and replaced Dalton Schultz with him. You know, they're looking for additional options outside of CeeDee Lamb. So I think, yeah, wide receiver could be a definite option here, but I don't think there's any wide receivers on the board that will require a first round pick. Maybe the only player that I, I would see here, maybe a Jalen Hyatt uh, from Tennessee. Um, but I think you can get Jalen Hyatt in the second round. Dallas may have to trade up to get him, but I think you can get Jalen Hyatt in the second round if you're the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I think they go tight end. He helps them in the running game. We know they want to run the ball with Tony Pollard. If Z comes back, if he you know takes a, a little bit of a pay cut, hometown discount, you know, they want to be able to run the ball. They still want to be able to be physical up front. They want to utilize play action, get the ball up to the playmakers in space. I think Darnell Washington helps them do that. Uh, Buffalo Bills at 27. Uh, Micah Hyde is 32. They could be losing Jordan Poirier in free agency. I think Brian Branch is still on the board. Uh, best safety in the draft class. He falls to them at 27. I think they jump right on it. Cincinnati Bengals on the clock here at 28. Tackle, defensive line, cornerback is a need. Those are the top three needs. I'm putting the third one first. At some point, Cincinnati. At some point, you got to stop rolling out Eli Apple. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. I know he's a, a, a national treasure for memes and meme creators and social media. I, but you gotta stop doing it at some point. You gotta start rolling out Eli Apple. I'm going Deontay Banks at 28 to the Cincinnati Bengals because they gotta stop rolling out Eli Apple. They just have to. Saints are on the clock. This might be another splashy one. Saints on the clock. They are in cap purgatory right now. They got a lot of issues with the cap space. And now we got some legal issues for Alvin Kamara. Might be a problem. So legal issues, cap issues. He might have played his last down in New Orleans. Cool. How do we replace that? Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama. Easy. Explosive running back. He's got the speed. Best receiving running back in the draft class. You replace Alvin Kamara with a carbon copy of a player in the same play style. Beautiful. Uh, Eagles on the clock. Wide receiver, guard, center. Wide receiver, not a need. Again, they have Batman. They got skinny Batman. We talked about guard, center. What could possibly happen there? Cool. They could be losing a lot of people on this defensive side of the ball. One, like I mentioned earlier, got to re-sign Jalen Hurts. Uh, they could be losing Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Javon Hargrave, Robert Quinn. That, that's four guys. Once you figure out how to pay Hurts, once you figure out who else you, you're trying to keep, are you going to be able to keep all of those guys? Is Brandon Graham going to retire? Is Fletcher Cox going to retire? Is Robert Quinn going to retire? Like, I don't think all three of them do. Maybe one of them does. Who knows? But are you going to be able to bring back all four of those guys? Probably not. So I think they can get young and get explosive. They can get athletic. They can throw Andre Carter on this defense with Josh Sweat and Son Reddick and not skip a beat. Maybe they don't lead the league in sacks with 70 plus sacks again. You know, but they're still able to get after the quarterback efficiently and effectively. I'm going Andre Carter II to the Philadelphia Eagles at pick 30. 
And the final pick in this first round, Kansas City Chiefs at 31. This team is a team that really doesn't need much. So they say wide receiver and D-line. Yeah, you could go wide receiver again. Is there somebody that's worth a first round pick left? Nah. You can go Jalen Hyatt, but Jalen Hyatt is really a one-trick pony. He's got speed. He's a vertical threat. You have that in Marquez Valdez game. Um, defensive line. I mean, you have Chris Jones. who just drafted George Karloftis. Somehow, Frank Clark is still only 29. He'll be 30 in June or he'll be 30 once the season starts. Um, so I think you're, you're pretty good there. Where could they use additional help? I, in my estimation, looking at this team, looking at what's coming down the pike, I would say offensive line. Um, it is possible that they lose Orlando Brown Jr. to free agency. Somebody may offer him the bag, and maybe Kansas City just will, isn't willing to pay that tag. They also have Andrew Wiley, who's a free agent. So if they give Orlando Brown Jr. the bag, they may not have enough money left over to keep Andrew Wiley. So what do they do? I think they go to the well, get a young guy to bring in and see what they're able to do. I think they go Darnell Wright out of Tennessee, put him next to his former teammate, Trey Smith in college, and continue to protect Patrick Mahomes. So here's our first round. Will Anderson, number one to the Bears. CJ Stroud, number two to the Texans. Tyree Wilson, number three to the Cardinals. Will Levis, number four to the Colts. Bryce Young, number five to the Seahawks. Jalen Carter, six to the Lions. Devin Witherspoon, seven to the Raiders. Miles Murphy, eight to the Falcons. Anthony Richardson, nine to the Panthers. Joey Porter Jr. to the Eagles at 10. Jordan Addison to the Tennessee Titans at 11. We get uh, CJ Stroud, a wide receiver. Quentin Johnson, 12 to the Texans. Uh, Paris Johnson to the Jets at 13. Peter Skaronski to the Patriots at 14. Uh, the Packers select Jackson Smith and Jigba 15th overall. Washington Commanders add Broderick Jones at 16. Michael Mayer to the Lions at 18. Lucas Van Ness to the Buccaneers at 19. Seahawks get Nolan Smith at 20. I still think that's a really, really good pick. I think he's a perfect fit for them. Uh, Anton Harrison tackle for uh, Oklahoma goes to the Chargers at 21. My young bull, Zay Flowers from Boston College, goes to the Ravens at 22. Brian Breezy, defensive lineman, goes to the Vikings at 23. Guard Osiris Torrance to the Jaguars at 24. Look out for this one. No Saquon Barkley means B. John Robinson at 25 to the Giants. Darnell Washington, tight end to the Cowboys at 26. Safety Brian Branch to the Bills at 27. The Bengals finally move on from Eli Apple and select Deontay Banks from Maryland at 28. Uh, the Saints replace Alvin Kamara with Jameer Gibbs at 29. Andre Carter II finds a home in Philly at pick 30. And the Kansas City Chiefs continue to protect the best quarterback in football with Darnell Wright tackle out of Tennessee at pick 31. That is the first official first round mock draft right here at Mo's Nose again. Stay tuned in to the channel. We're gonna be doing multiple first round mocks. We're gonna be doing our team specific mock drafts. And then we're gonna do some mocks where we throw in some trades. Maybe some of these teams that are a little bit down the list, maybe they move up to get a Will Levis or a CJ Stroud or, or a Bryce Young. Maybe the teams that don't need a quarterback like a Chicago Bears, Arizona Cardinals, Seattle Seahawks, uh, even the Detroit Lions, maybe they move back because they get a draft haul from one of these other teams looking to get one of those top three or four quarterbacks. So again, stay tapped in to Mo's Nose. We've got a long, you know, month and a half until we get to the draft at the end of April. Um, so this is going to be your home for all things NFL draft. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. Again, become a part of the Mo's Nose fam. Once you're part of the fam, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Throw a like on this video. Comment down below what you liked about this mock draft, what you don't like. If you if you liked your team's pick, let me know that you liked the pick. If you didn't, let me know what you would do differently. Love to hear all of your comments. Uh, love interacting with you guys, as always. 
Again, love and appreciate you. Stay tapped into the content, and we'll see you in the next mock draft. Peace.